Hi, hello, welcome. It's directly to you, episode 203. Directly to you, what is that? That's our podcast, Redirect. I'm AJ. I'm from Redirect. I'm joined by Parker, who is also from Redirect. We do a podcast. It's about video games and everything. Uh, if you're, mm-hmm. Hey, if you're a Sonic fan and you clicked into this, you might not be happy. So maybe go. Uh, <laughs> but if you do want to stay and you want to support this I'm channel, really you can do that by going to youtube.com slash watch redirect or twitch.tv slash watch redirect and give them $4.99. And it don't even got to be your own money if you're on twitch.tv specifically. You could take it from Jeffy B. Still from the rich mm-hmm. give to the... I mean, we're not poor, but we're compared to him, we're poor. For sure, mm-hmm. definitely, for sure. absolutely, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> in exchange for that, you get loyalty badges, you get free switch keys from time to time, you get access to our supporters only Discord, where you can listen to us record this very show as we do it. Like people in the peanut gallery currently, they help this troubleshoot and figure, or not troubleshoot. That's the, we, we we brainstorm like that. We brainstormed yeah, what that's we bad. wanted to talk about because the you know just like I said, if you're a Sonic fan, abort, <laughs> leave. You gotta go, because <laughs> because we considered not talking about Sonic off the top because it's not going to be a positive conversation, most likely. Um, but yeah, that's that's what we do here. Uh, also, if you're an audio listener and you're on Anchor.fm slash DTY and you didn't know, we have a YouTube channel for this. We're recorded on video. That's YouTube.com slash directly to you. And if you're already on youtube.com slash directly to you, you can go to anchor.fm slash DTY and listen to it on your audio service of choice. Uh, or if you just have the audio service and you, you don't want to use it for that, you can still use it and then you know click the subscribe or follow or whatever it's called on your audio service of choice because it helps us out. It helps with ranking. Mm-hmm. Speaking of ranking, leave a rating. <laughs> that also helps. If you like the show, let us know through the rating. <laughs> Um, uh, that's that's all the things I think that is. Yeah, you did it. So Sonic the Hedgehog, hello. <sighs> you start because you're going to be more positive than me. <laughs> I will. I, I will indeed. Um, I mean, hard is so we found out I guess some things here and there this week about Sonic. I guess we're specifically thinking Sonic Frontiers for this conversation, right? Mm-hmm. Um. So, so, I mean, I mean there's, there's this one, one article, article itself that I pulled, pulled up that, that um, um, yeah, let's, let's read some quotes, quotes if there are any, here, which I, I think there are. The, the, the headline is, is Sonic Team Boss says, says lots of playtesters play are really, are really enjoying, enjoing Sonic Frontiers and would, and would give it an 80 or 90 score, which I'll stop and say real quick that for what it's worth, Sonic Forces had like, like a, a 34 or 35, 35 out of 40, 40 or something, something like that, that from, from um, my dog has some, some sort of trash, trash. Um, on, on Famitsu, Famitsu which, which would be about 80s and stuff. And, stuff. and that, that game was Not kind of garbage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I when I say kind of, yeah. Kinda, yeah. I, 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 mean, I mean, I played, played literally the demo, demo and I was like, nah, nah no, I'm good. And then, you know, everybody else gave feedback. I played the whole entire game and I was disappointed that I wasted my time, as I am every time I play a Sonic the Hedgehog game that's in 3D. Uh huh. So, so, but here's, here's some here's some, here's some Sonic Adventure. That one's fine, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, um, let's see. So, so the, the question, question for, for who is this for? Is Zuka uh, said based, based on the, the, or the question was based, based on the release footage. Many fans called, fans called for the game, game to be delayed, delayed on Twitter. Is, is delay an option? option? Should you deem it necessary? And then he said Frontiers is in development now. And actually, we've been doing a lot of playtesting with our target audience, who would be in that demographic of someone who plays a Sonic game and enjoy it. From our playtesting results, we have been iterating. Yeah, we've, yeah been we've been iterating, iterating. We've, we've been listening to the comments that come back, but we've also been getting, getting a, lot a lot of great feedback from people who rate the game and are like, I had, I had a lot of fun playing this game. game. I'd give it like an 80 or 90 point, point score out of 100. Out of 100. So, so we do feel, feel that we're getting to the point where, where, where this game is done and people will like it, and we do want to get that game into fans' hands as soon as possible. That's second question, second and final question. The overwhelming concern from those fans appeared to be to, to ensure, ensure that Sonic Team has, has as much time, time as it needs, needs to make a great, great game. game. Do, do you, you have enough time? And, and do, do you have the choice to delay? I love that we're coming back to that. that. Um, we, we really, really feel confident in the playtest results that we're getting. A lot of people are saying that they had a lot of fun. They really enjoyed the game. We realize a lot of people are watching the videos online and making assumptions, but we do feel confident based on the playtest results from the target demographic that are coming in and playing the game start to finish. They really like the game, and we're confident that we're making a game that will be satisfying. The, the end. end. All right. Thank, Thank you for, for joining, joining us. us. See, See you next time. Go, Go ahead. ahead. <laughs> so, 
the problem with this is that they're doubling down on that target demographic people that have played sonic games and would enjoy it the 3d sonic games specifically right mm. so these are people mm -hmm, right. that actively defend stuff like sonic 06 and sonic boom <laughs> and sonic you know like all the sonic games that like the general cons consensus amongst like gaming fans, platforming fans, you know, people that like video games at large and not just like the Sonic universe or people that, mm -hmm. you know, like think like Sonic's Paul, like he's cool. He's a cool character. He was one of my favorite characters growing up. I could show you pictures. I had a whole room of Sonic stuff at Sonic comforters, I had all that stuff. If you could ask yeah. anybody else that, that is in my family or a friend growing up, I freaking love Sonic, but I am also somebody that is not afraid to let you know when something that I like is not done well. Uh -huh. And 3D Sonic games, for the most part, not done well. Mm. Haven't been done well for a long time. And yeah. even the ones that were done well for their time, did not age great. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that the, like that sort of demographic is the same people that will tell you like if you're playing uh sonic adventure any of the sonic adventure games uh yeah. when when there's like situations where the game wants you to be on rails but the game didn't commit enough to put you on rails so you could do stuff like if you jump in certain places you'll clip through the wall or you'll just straight up die and stuff like that and a sonic fan somebody that would defend a game like this would be like well obviously you're not supposed to jump there like, like you know, def they, uh -huh. they defend bad like, like a Mario sixty four kind of situation yeah, exactly. where it's like, yeah. yeah. Again, Again, I still, I still love, love Mario sixty four. I, 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 I probably, probably wouldn't tell anybody to play it for the first time. time. Mm -hmm. Period. Period. <laughs> like, <laughs> besides, besides just, just for educational reasons, reasons or like, like yeah, yeah, I mean, it'll be frustrating. frustrating. You'll, You'll figure it out eventually if you want to, but otherwise, like, just just play Odyssey or whatever. Like beyond that, yeah. The thing about Mario sixty four is that's just Mario sixty four. And then there, there, <laughs> yeah, there's right. games past that that have learned from mistakes mm -hmm. that Mario 64 has made, and they yeah. might make other new mistakes. Um, mm -hmm. But the 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 good thing is that they learned from the mistakes that Mario 64 made. Sonic games yeah. they don't usually do that. They'll 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 try to do something different, and then mm -hmm. that'll still maintain the current mistakes that the old game made and introduce new mistakes <laughs> on top of that so it's like the 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 things that they introduce don't fix anything they just add mm -hmm. to the problem um like sonic uh adventure which i think on the whole is the formula that most people prefer right like for mm -hmm. 3d sonic um sonic unleashed and like every 3d game of that ilk was like ah oh, let's do the boost mechanic Mm -hmm. It's not good. It doesn't fix any of the problems with the game, but it introduces a new mechanic. I mean, a new problem that makes the whole game like those sections where it's like, ah, if you jump here, you might just clip through the the geometry and die. You know? Yeah. Um. There's like, and this game feels like more of that. <laughs> yeah. It is interesting. I think so. I mean, I've sort of said this before of myself. And so I, I can definitely differentiate between what I will or won't enjoy versus what other people will or won't enjoy. And also what I will or won't enjoy versus what's a good game, like just, you know, through and through. Because that's, you know, definitely that there's a difference there. So for me, looking at what we're looking at, if it checks the two, the, I guess three boxes of it, it's fun, it's fun to, to move, move around. around, you know, like go around using the like environmental things and whatever, whatever all that stuff. stuff. Like, like if those things are fun and, and also there is um, like, like interesting things to explore. To explore. And, and also if, if there's, there's rewarding progress, progress. If, if it has those three things, things then I will have, have a good time, time with the game. game. Having a good time, time with the game does not mean it's necessarily a good game. game. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I can see myself that, enjoying that, that, it. Yeah, it also doesn't mean that those problems don't exist. And it also also doesn't yeah. mean that the problems that exist won't affect you. Because like yeah. Yeah. you bring that up, right? Like it's it's less of a thing that these things aren't problems to you. It's mm -hmm. just you're willing to excuse them because of the the, the positives of it.
Yeah, yeah, right, right. Um, I, mean, I mean, there's plenty, there's of, plenty games, of games, you know, like you know, that where it's like, yeah, I mean, there are all there these, are issues, all these that issues that I can understand, understand. understand. But it does the, but like, it does the, like, you know, it's, you know, it's, it does enough I'm not, things I'm not, that you it does enough of the good things that I'm just like, I don't care that much. That's fine. I'm only looking to scratch this variety of itch at the moment. So, you know, I'm not looking forward to do more than that. Right. But I think they're posing it so far. We're talking about it being an 80 or 90 game. They're posing it as a game that's going to be Everything, everything and then, then some, some right. um, which, which like, like again, again you know they're they're posing would it as be a great game if it is. will be reviewed well <laughs> but defending it from the pov of ah, our current fans will like it so it's fine and those two <laughs> things are not the same like mm. if if this game is made for current 3d sonic games and it's a 3d sonic game it will not be reviewed well mm-hmm. generally yeah. yeah um and that's the problem that i currently have Granted, Mm -hmm. I will say that this game has a pretty tall order, uh, even beyond general Sonic games, because I think that this game is even worse off and worse suited for the Sonic abilities, like what Sonic does, the type of character that Sonic is, Mm -hmm. than current 3D Sonic games. (laughs) <laughs> um so it's like not only do they have to improve on what they've done before they have to do even better than that because they're making it even harder for themselves to make a game that is good right yeah yeah, yeah. no it's true i was gonna ask something but i don't exactly remember what so i won't but i mean so for one thing um yeah mark asked a question earlier that i thought was poignant if frontiers is gonna suck uh, actually, here I'll wait to go to that question. Well, the the question is, if Frontiers is going to suck, what would be the ideal Sonic game? But we'll hold off on that because mm. I have some other things. One thing I forgot to mention is when we first talked about Sonic Frontiers, but it does make me worried's the wrong word because I don't really I don't have a lot of stake in Sonic anywhere. Yeah. So who cares? Um, but it makes me it's interesting to note that there was Breath of the Wild style piano music mm-hmm. like ambient piano music playing during maybe that was just during the you know the video and that's not actually what the music is like in the world that like i love that in breath of the wild it is weird and sonic Mm -hmm. (laughs) like that just does not fit i think it's you know very much like you know know, they they don't don't know know what their identity is it feels kind of like a lot of sonic modern sonic Sonic at all is kind of pulling uh like star wars sequel kind of thing Mm -hmm. where it's like i don't really know we are but like like we're something the thing about 3d sonic is it feels super like focus groupy to me and it it, like almost always has like even to a certain Mm -hmm. extent the adventure games feel focus groupy it feels like Mm -hmm. they're like you know what the kids like 3d so we gotta make sonic 3d how do we mm-hmm. do that? I have no idea. What do other 3D <laughs> games do? You know, like, uh-huh. and and I I don't think that Sonic, uh, uh, like uh like Sonic designed well, mm-hmm. is not what other games are. You yes. know, yes. It's, like, it's, Sonic it is, super is different not for Zelda. For sure. So mm-hmm. like an open and it's it's kind of like what people at large talk about, where it's like, oh, everything doesn't need to be open world, that sort of thing. I think mm-hmm. Sonic is one of those things where it's like mm-hmm. if yeah. an open world game doesn't add to the design of the game, probably shouldn't be open world. You know. So I'm, I'm thinking, thinking about, about yeah, yeah, totally. I'm, I'm thinking, thinking about two things to like, like pull conceptual, conceptual inspiration from. from. I, guess I guess maybe, maybe for, for the question of, of if yeah, like, like what would be the ideal Sonic, Sonic game. game. Um, but, but for, for that, that is, is I feel, I feel like, like Mario's, Mario's New, New Donk City. City and um uh, jet, uh, jet set, set radio. radio like like i haven't played, I haven't played jet, jet set radio at all so i only know very few things, things about, about it, it. But, but like something, something about those two things has, has to be scaled, scaled completely differently for sonic, sonic. And, I and i don't necessarily, necessarily think that, that just like open open fields, fields is the answer to this, to this. Um, um but, but those, those kinds of things where there is, there is like, like there's environment, environment or you know, you know maybe, maybe even, even open, open area, area kind of a thing, thing like that, that but, but feels, feels like a good playground for sonic, sonic but, but maybe whatever, whatever as, as opposed to like it, at, at least in terms, terms of trying this more, more open thing as opposed to very linear sort of example would be interested in seeing what that looks like but i yeah i don't know 
And I'd be curious to see what future environments look like in Sonic Frontiers too, because maybe it's not just the grassy area. Maybe there is like a cityscape kind of area that feels better. You know, it feels more like intersected specific levels where there's paths that like, yeah, yeah, this, this basically, basically, you know, you know feels, feels like 12, 12 Sonic, Sonic levels put into, put into one, but they just, just have different, different starting points and kind of overlap, overlap with each other or something like that. that. Like, I could, I could see, see that going fairly well, well. Um, but I just, I just don't, don't know that, that this the is... The way I that. see it is, like, I, I think know. Sonic needs to feel like a, like a Tony Hawk sort of situation. Like, that's yeah. what yeah. the stages yeah. need to be. It, it shouldn't mm-hmm. be like, ah, crap, we need to skate and we need to be able to like do tricks and stuff so throw a ramp it's like no we're in a city so let's use what a city would have to mm-hmm. you know like can like be conducive of whatever track tricks you want to do like you know mm-hmm. like to facilitate all that stuff um with this game it's very obvious that they're like ah, oh, we gotta be sonic here somehow but we want to do a very realistic-esque like open yeah. world just breath of the wild sort of environment so just throw rails and ramps all over the place that makes sense mm-hmm. <laughs> and and b- people's defense to this is like oh but sonic always has floating rails and stuff like that and it's like look at look at how sonic rails look in the in the context of their world and compare it to how these look in mm-hmm. the context of of this current world yeah one looks a lot more in place than the other one does you yeah know, like, diegetic, diegetic and, and like it's it fits, fits in with, with no, no i think totally like, like some like something where it, fa- it feels like again, again the, the nice thing, thing about new dawn, dawn city, city for, for example is it feels kind of like found footage sort of, sort of it, not mm-hmm. found footage but found, found like you're, you're making an obstacle course out of what's already there and of course what's already there was perfectly designed specifically for mario but similarly you know you're showing up somewhere where it's like oh yeah this is I'm just, I'm just in, in some, some city, city doing my Mario, Mario stuff. Um, and, and so similarly, I feel, I feel like Sonic in some, some kind of futuristic city where things, streets are a lot wider and, you know, buildings, buildings are a lot higher and stuff because you got to be able to do the Sonic type stuff and like, I don't know, running on walls or something like that, you know, um, feels a lot more natural than, yeah, than, yeah, than floating, floating platforms and towers, towers that have bumpers on them already for some reason, you know, like yeah. that... <laughs> It just, just not win- makes sense. And on, yeah. on top of that, right? Like a lot of other times, and in, in open world games, and the good open world games, they use the world for gameplay in some way, yeah, right? right? The the mm-hmm. only thing that an open world serves Sonic for is that he is fast. So it's like mm-hmm. he's fast, man. So we got to give him a lot of real estate to run around because you know if there's not that big of a world and he's fast, mm-hmm. you're just going to like keep running up against walls all over the th- all yeah. over the place, right? But mm-hmm. <laughs> then you're just left in these in these situations where it's like I got I'm going to run really really fast to these very specific like uh, like um, pop up esque <laughs> like mm-hmm. uh, obstacle courses, um, yeah. and then it's. A whole bunch of go for a really long time or not for a really long time but like you know run really fast run really fast stop walk mm-hmm. really slow be very precise <laughs> you know yeah <laughs> like, yeah, yeah honestly, honestly so, so i feel, I feel like, like you know kind, kind of sticking, sticking to the more original thing of like exploring by getting to an area that's hard to get to because you have to like do you know certain things in a particular way or whatever. like there's definitely, definitely some things that are harder to do in sonic games it's, it's a speed um, run take it's precision a speed run yeah. game. that's what exactly. that's what it is i feel, I feel like, like that's something, something that again using city, city as the example for that and tony hawk is i was thinking that as well before you even said it too mm-hmm. is that like there's places in tony hawk where it's like oh it's really hard to get over here mm-hmm. You don't, you don't have, have to get, get over there, there if you don't want to, to but, but there is a collectible there right. so like if, if you want to go get that collectible you got to do this hard thing but it's, it's also, also optional, optional you know, know so, so it's, it's but it includes r- taking, taking some ramps, ramps getting up to this um uh, like, like roof, roof or whatever and then, then using, using this one jump to get over there with like a good amount of speed or like upgrading your stats to be able to get over those kinds of things mm-hmm. i feel like similarly that like that's a good way to kind of bring classic, classic sonic, sonic back, back in that same, in that kind, same of kind of regard as having areas, areas where, where like you do have to start, do have from, to start this from this one point and do this kind of speed running section that probably is kind of probably grindy, kind of grindy to, to if you don't, if you don't get, get it on the first, the first couple, couple tries, tries like try it, try it a bunch of times, times but kind of get it get down after a while so you're basically practicing a level which just happens to be you know part of the world as opposed to like 
I'm choosing level three, two or something like that. Um, and maybe that'll be the case in, in this game already. You know, there might be some stuff like that, but it just feels, again, it, it feels forced when it's like ramps just out in the middle of nowhere and like rails, you know, floating in space as opposed to being like, I see that building over there and I want to get on top of that building. Or, you know, like the Mario stuff with the coins on top of the temple underground where they reward you for getting up there, but it's hard to do and you don't have to do it, but it's fun to do it if you want to, those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> they, I, I, to answer what Mark said, I think that mm-hmm. is one of those things, right? Where it's like to make a Sonic game good, they got to stop starting from the world that they want to make, like in terms of like, mm-hmm. we want to be like, the focus group what they want you know people love breath of the wild let's make that uh-huh. you know um if if you feel like it's like ah this can't be a sonic game unless we put rails here if you have to inject the rails after the fact maybe right. your world isn't conducive to sonic you know yeah mm-hmm. um it, it's like start from what you what those implants are and work backwards from there build the world to be a sonic world first and then with sonic in yep. it you know i mean like you know stark example but same kind of thing of like if you just decided to drop mario kart in breath of the wild it would it i love those two games and like the aesthetics are great but like you would have to do so much to make anything feel even remotely like a mario kart level for a minute is it, it just doesn't like those are two entirely different games and so one doesn't just like translate magically into the other one and i think yeah we're in a similar situation here again you know unless we've seen more footage of other things besides this grassy area i'd be interested to see what other areas look like because like probably this is the equivalent of like green greens right isn't that what it's called in sonic uh um, green hill zone green hills yeah, green greens green? is oh that's kirby kirby yep yeah um so probably this is like the green hills but like maybe you know we'll come to the factory with but the, even with the green hills just, like look at green hill zone yeah 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 it does not look like that you know like it looks like uh-huh. it's all part of one world this looks like sonic landed on this planet and then he like built the world around him to yeah. to, to facilitate himself and uh-huh. like he did land on this planet but it's already ready for him somehow you know mm-hmm. like <laughs> like it's like that sort of stuff and even with that i feel like that's that's like a a, a bad excuse to be like, he, he, you know, he's he's a uh, like an alien out of his out of his element, you know, like that sort uh-huh. of situation. It's like if he's out of his element, then why is the world tailored to his abilities? You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. And poorly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it'll be fun to see how it pans out. And again, like I would rather they be right and we be wrong just because yeah, I would hope that the be game for is a better good. game. Yeah. I want but, the game to be good, but I doubt it will be. I mean, even, even if the game is good, these criticisms still apply where it's like, why, why are there floating things? You know, yeah. Again, it could still be fun to have those floating things, but it is weird. Like that's, you know, and not in a way that's going to be, but I don't, I don't even know, know if it it's will be weird. fun. I don't know. I don't know if the overall experience will be, will be fun. Pretty. Because the, the, the idea is that it's like, oh, again, like these pop-up areas, there, there's pockets mm-hmm. of fun, <laughs> you know, like yeah. there's a lot of nothing where you're just mm-hmm. running aimlessly and then it's like, oh, shoot, thing that I can interact with. I'm going to jump on that rail and then jump off yeah. of that rail and then get that coin, you know, like, or whatever. That's where I'm very emblem. curious about, like, the gameplay loop as a whole, just because, it, it, yeah, it could totally just feel like you're kind of walking around looking for a starting point of something and like, yeah, I, yeah, I just don't know those two things, the exploration and it being fun to move around in. If those don't intersect very efficiently, then that's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I I think the game's going to be bad. Also just noticed, I mean, I listened to the audio and it didn't sound bad, but I, I went through and I turned off the discord recording for that because you might be doubled but i don't know so the audio listeners i'm sorry 
um if you did if you know the first like 15 minutes or something like that weren't great for you but i fixed it <laughs> it's good now <laughs> uh, that's funny yeah we'll we'll listen back afterwards and find out that'll be that'll be interesting so with that um that's some news that uh you know some old games or some whatever old franchises come into new stuff but also pokemon snap that's the second it's later. true it. it's true but That's just coming. other news. It's just, I just put it all under other yep. news. Other news is great. Pokemon yeah. Snap is is coming, and that's fine because <laughs> we knew it was coming. They made like a, a, a the thing is like they didn't care about the other games as much as they did Pokemon Snap. Clearly, <laughs> because Pokemon yeah. Snap got like a cool trailer. I I don't think I feel like the other games got trailers, right? Maybe not. yeah, but it was like I, I think they just got like freaking like nintendo like the nes games like that sort of trailer mm, but they like mm. specifically made like like it looks like it's like a new like the fire emblem uh game the shadow dragon or whatever it was like yeah, that yeah. kind of trailer whereas the other ones oh, got yeah. like a here's the newest update to nintendo snes yep. game library type i'm of, rewatching you know. it and you're totally right yeah. i just had seen it and was like yeah look at that neat but yeah it definitely feels like a definitely have a favorite child that said <laughs> mega man said game of the year absolutely not no pokemon snap is fine it's okay uh-huh but it is the worst version of the thing that we have already mm -hmm. i mean it, it's yeah again like you said it's nice to have i don't know that it'll get i mean people will play it for sure and also sure. it is nice because compared to some other games like going from mario odyssey to mario 64 for the first time ever is kind of like, oh, this is different. Okay. Um, again, Mario 64 is great, but it's clunky to go back for the first time. Or, yeah, or this you won't know, necessarily Breath of the Wild be that. to Ocarina yeah. of Time or anything like that is like right. more kind of um, abrasive in terms of just the difference. Mm -hmm. Whereas this one is a lot more one to one for right. what it's worth. So, like, if you like the new Pokemon Snap and you want something to go back to then like you can just pop back to this one and have some more stuff to do so that's nice yeah it's neat yeah it is it's a pretty fun time mark said but it's also the freer version of the thing we have true also true that's a fact <laughs> so if you, if you like never played the original pokemon snap and you're like you don't know if you're gonna like new pokemon snap you could try this mm -hmm. and yeah that makes sense that's yep. true for what it's worth i mean this also is nice because it feels like all the more likely that we'll get some additional N64 games announced whenever a direct happens. True. Just because at this point, then we already have Banjo. Is Banjo already? Yep. Yeah, Banjo came. Banjo came like this, a while. Did, the are we, did the they announce Banjo Tooie ever? No. Uh uh. So we just have Banjo Kazooie. That might have been rumored at some point, but. No, I think I think we probably just. When we did the like oh, thing yes. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're totally right. Yeah, I can't remember. I think we saved. We did. Spreadsheet. Sure. I'm looking up. Yeah. Yeah, we guessed at some of these that would come out at some point, I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. so um, we said Banjo Tooie, Goldeneye, which that one, I mean, lots of rumors have been happening about Goldeneye. Yep. Mario Party 2, Pilot Wing 64, Smash, and Wave Race are like the next batch coming out mm -hmm. the second half of the year. Uh, so, there you go. My cool. ears will mo momentarily perk up for Smash. I'll probably play it once. And then <laughs> uh, yeah. What about playing it online? Is that any kind of more enticing? No, not really. I mean, I could see I could see me and Lee every once in a while being like, you know what, for Smash Tuesday, let's do Smash sixty four. You know, like I could see that. Yeah. But other than that, eh. Mm -hmm. eh. Yep. Huh. Well, I'll be coming back to to this related topic during games we're playing for that. Mm. But in the meantime, um, there was a rumor for uh, I don't know how much we should get into details of this because it's rumors and stuff. But um, the Fire Emblem, yeah, uh, that game is done pretty much. I mean, it's it's from Emily Rogers, and she's like one of the reputable sources. Yeah, if you know. And all that. Um, and there was also some screenshots that we're not going to show in case you don't want to see them that seem like, you know, those are probably, I mean, they're definitely, they seem to match up with the things the that she said about like that, them. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty likely. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Oh, oh no. Let me insert this out. Got it. Okay, we're good. Nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, anytime somebody becomes sore door, he just has a, a good old time. Um, but yeah, so Fire Emblem. It's, I guess the biggest question just is like, I mean, it's done, sounds like. Now we know a couple of details about it, probably. And then when do we see it? I don't know. It's direct. It's going to open the direct. <laughs> Just like the last time when uh, uh-huh. I think the title of the stream was Water Emblem. And then the first thing was Three Hopes. Yeah. Um, so we got we got to do the bit next for, uh-huh. for this next direct. Um, yep. So there it is. Indeed. Yeah. Um, what are you what, just considering having played Three Houses and enjoying that? What would be your excitement level for a new you know, assuming it's pretty much the same kind of thing as Three Houses, but just a new game. Excitement level, I'd say like a six, maybe a low mm-hmm. seven. Um, yeah. But I'll try it, you know, just like the last mm-hmm. one. I'll try it. <laughs> um, yeah. The thing is, like, do I want it? You know what? Nah, never mind. Because you probably wouldn't want to do that. I was about to say what we should do is like, we could like go half on vouchers and then just put it on the on the on the Narnian account. Yeah, um, I mean, for this game, I don't. Know. Yeah, for this game, maybe not. But I, I have thought for some other games that would be worthwhile, mm-hmm. just for, yeah, for us to be able to both have it on. Yeah. And stuff. But oh, we'll yep, see. Yep. Um, I also am find it if I get a game to just play on, um, airplane mode or whatever as well. If you want to play anything, so. Yeah, that also works. I just would yeah. say because you know, the, eventually there's going to be a new switch. Yep. I'm going, I'm going to be in the same situation where I the, like lose all the save files because I I forget the password and I got to freaking be like ah, I got yeah. a message Parker, but I don't know what he's doing right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, for what it's worth, I uh, yeah, I'm kind of with you. I'm I'd probably put my excitement level more closer to like a seven or something like that. But I think this is always the kind of game where it's like, okay, yeah, that seems pretty fun. But uh-huh. it's as soon as I actually start it that I'm like, all right, now here we go. And I like, think it, I think it's closer. To, it might be closer to six, maybe even lower than that for me because it is one of those games that, like, even if I want to play it, I don't care to see it. I, like, yeah, right. to know that it exists, <laughs> fine. Hopefully, uh-huh. it's coming out within the next like four to six months or whatever, mm-hmm. right? And it's like, okay, dope. Um, but I don't need to know systems. I don't need to know how they change relationships or whatever. I, like mm-hmm. none of that matters to me outside of actually playing the game. I don't care. I don't On care. On the plus side, if this is the, you know, the first direct that it shows up in and assuming it only shows up in one direct, typically the first time that a game like this shows up, it's just a regular like cinematic y kind of trailer mm. sort of thing. Yeah. It doesn't have all that other stuff. Yes. And then if it shows up a second time, then usually Then they it, will do the, the deep happen, dive. So. Which is dumb and I hate it and I don't think it makes any <laughs> sense. I, I mean for what it's worth, I could see it showing up this year in this direct or the next one or whatever and then getting a more dedicated, you know, like slot in a early year direct next year and being talked about for five minutes and stuff like that. But I don't know. You never know. Or maybe you just said, maybe it gets a dedicated direct and you don't have to watch it at all. True. That's a fact. Yeah. I mean, not true because, you know, podcast and I'll probably have to watch it for <laughs> That's that. That's true. <laughs> um, but. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, it, it is the kind of thing where just like, yeah, if as soon as I like, start. Even if I love the game, I don't care. I don't care mm-hmm. about that. Like <laughs> yeah. retroactively. Really like Three Houses. Pretty good game. Mm-hmm. Would not watch a thing breaking down, you know, yeah. like the the systems and all that. Like, cause I just don't think that ever really works. Like, yeah. I'm not going to retain any of that for when I'm actually playing the game. So Honestly, why tell me I, now? Yeah, like I mean, Alec as an example, or anybody else, leave in the comments of like if you you know are also somebody who loves rpgs and stuff like that do you care about in trailers it talking about you know systems and those kinds of things or more just 
I don't know, you can kind of garner some of that from just showing some footage with and talking over it or something like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or at least I, I feel that way. But yeah, I mean, I'd be curious if anybody is interested in, in that kind of thing. And maybe it's just that they just want to show off the stuff they've been working on. But still, is that worth it if you are shooting yourself in the foot and turning off other people that would be interested otherwise? Or finally, could it be that you're trying to make sure that nobody gets it thinking it's like an action RPG, find out that it's a turn-based right. strategy RPG, and then be like, oh, uh, never mind. I think that you can do that just by showing gameplay. Um, but I don't even necessarily, it's not even necessarily a thing that I think it turns anybody off. I just think it hurts the pacing of the overall direct. Like Uh I think, yes, right. Halt all momentum. Here are menus. (laughs) (laughs) I think that is just a bad move. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I, I fully agree with that. Yeah. Alex said, I care about the systems, but I think it's bad for a commercial. And oh, yeah. Mark said, the 12-minute breakdown of systems gives me time to ignore it and do a little work. So I don't feel bad about watching it direct while working. <laughs> so yeah, checks out. <laughs> I think we're we're not alone with that kind of thing. But I don't think they're going to stop anytime soon. For me, it's so. the opposite of that. It, 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 it is me working. I'm watching <laughs> this and I'm trying to, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of times stream it, sort of entertain in the meantime and i don't want to freaking the 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 option for entertaining in that situation is making fun of the trailer and i don't <laughs> want to spend 12 minutes making fun of this trailer you guys know that i don't want to freaking see the menus for the next half hour <laughs> uh-huh <laughs> yeah it's true so we'll see hopefully that game will come out tomorrow and be all yes of fun. <laughs> and it'll be a level 10 excitement for everyone Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um lastly for the news i mean okay so there was a there were technically lots of things that have happened because summer games fest and all that stuff but it's same kind of thing as last week where it's just like various little announcements yo we got freaking final fantasy 7 uh Uh crisis core remaster Uh and that's what it is right R or something? I don't. That doesn't matter. It's not on I Nintendo. Don't I don't think so. Oh, well, it, it's right, just right, on right. PlayStation Five, so it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. It doesn't exist here. <laughs> um, but but the Crisis Core remaster does exist. Mm-hmm. No, not Rebirth, Alec. Rebirth. That doesn't exist. They didn't announce that for. for but that's Nintendo. the one I was asking about. He was just being nice. Yeah, d- but on, that doesn't matter right now because <laughs> this is a Nintendo podcast. That's true. Uh, um i didn't even see screenshots crisis core remaster. it just it's just a remaster so you know it's just the general okay. like yeah, yeah, yeah. up res texture still kind of look you know mm-hmm. it looks like an early 360 game okay which is fine Intense. indeed what when's crisis core from originally crisis uh, core eh, not remastered just that's a game. psp game isn't it I think it's a PSP oh. game. Yep, you're totally right. Look right. at me, no one thinks. Look at you go. <laughs> Who would have guessed? <laughs> so yeah, that stuff. Um, also, Xbox had their presentation. Okay, since we talked about true, the true, true, Sony true, true, state true, of play, true. I guess just like overall thoughts on that. I think Xbox did everything that I complain about other presentations not doing. You know, yeah, they true. did all of it. Like, no, I mean, like, in a positive way. Like, yeah, right. they, they only showed announcements that are planned within the next 12 months. Mm-hmm. Um, they showed multiple games, gave dates. A lot of them are soon. Um, they, mm-hmm. you know, kept the momentum. They didn't, they didn't like, stop and talk about a freaking mobile game or whatever. Uh, they yeah. showed gameplay of these True. games, not CG trailers. You know, we didn't get any pitch meetings except for the freaking... Uh, what is that game called? Star, Star, Starfield. Starfield. Yeah. Um, I feel like they're lying about that game. That game is cap. Um, that game I I would doubt, uh, is coming yeah. out next year. Uh, and, is, and also just... speaking of that, Bethesda, Bethesda just ruined all of that. You know, like they 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 were like, ah, okay, we're checking a lot of these boxes. Let's throw it in the garbage because we're going to talk <laughs> about a game that we announced preemptively before and preemptively announce another game in tandem with that. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. where they're like, they're like, all right, we're almost done with Starfield. Yeah. It's coming out soonish. And after that, and then... you're getting freaking what is it? Uh, uh, Elder, Elder Scrolls, Elder, Elder, and, Elder, and then Fallout. Yeah. And then Fallout. Like I. <laughs> 
who cares? Like you cannot yeah. play a logo. You can't play a logo. And it's not even good in the in the uh sort of thing of like here's a game, like here's a new property that might get you excited or whatever. Who yeah. doesn't know that we're getting another Fallout and another Elder Scrolls? Right. Who doesn't know that? I, I keep wanting to call it Elden Scrolls. <laughs> um, but who doesn't know that? Who is shocked? What? We're getting Fallout 5? I would have never knew. And, I, all and, I can think is like, it, because I'd be curious to hear from a Fallout fan if that's something that makes them more okay with Fallout 76 or more okay to ignore Fallout 76. And that must kind of be their play. But either way, it doesn't, make sense to do it like, yeah and like yeah. they didn't even do the like metroid thing where it's like here's fall here's more fallout 76 but before we show that here's this you know like right it yeah, was yeah, yeah. after starfield yeah so like duh and after we'd already seen some fallout 76 stuff yeah. in that yes in the trailer it's or so that part was dumb very yeah. very stupid yeah, um we've but, seen a bunch of that that and then also this week was i mean not from x not from microsoft but dragon dog dragons dog yeah too yes um just being like it is gonna it's happening an event it's eventually. happening but <laughs> like, even okay, that cool, like thanks. i feel like dragon's dogma which i i still think is ill-advised but it's like lower impact um it it was a metroid prime 4 situation of like all right, we know that this game is not guaranteed and nobody thought that it would ever happen. And Metroid, you know, it's on death's mm -hmm. door. But guess what? Yeah. We're making a new one, you know, like yeah. Dragon's Dog. Like literally I saw Alana Pierce being like, ah, I really wish that this game could happen. And then it, it happened and she's like, oh, just snap, <laughs> you know, like. Um, so I, yeah. I, I'm not as mad about that. I still think that it is a bad idea to announce mm -hmm. your pitch meetings, but. Right. If you're going to announce a pitch meeting, at least make it, you know, so that it, it, it serves a purpose beyond just hyping people up, you know? Yeah, right. Um, so, yeah. Eh. Other all than that, all, though, I, I mean, give them like a solid, like 7.5, 8. Yeah. I, I enjoyed, I, I think I watched most of it. Li no, I, I had oh, to pause it for also, a little bit. Also, real and quick, like, another W. Wow everything on game pass that's a w yes, like that, that's the other part about it right where it's like i feel like every other especially playstation it's it's mm -hmm. it's the expectations that i have for these presentations are directly like related with how how much of an investment are you asking it of me like i yeah. have game pass and even if i didn't have game pass it's 15 dollars a month <laughs> i can yeah. so that that then means that I don't need every game that you're showing me to be uh, even close to a, a, a 10 out of 10, you know? Yeah. But if you're asking me for $70 and you're showing me a bunch of sevens or lower, mm -hmm. eh, you know, like, eh. and uh, again, to bring, uh, to bring it back to this, if you're asking me for $70 and to wait for three, four, five <laughs> plus years, you yeah. better be showing me games that are worth all of that investment. But mm -hmm. if, if, if it's coming out within the next year, it's on Game Pass, which I already have. Or if I didn't, it's $15 a month. I can check it out, see if I do like it or if I don't like it. You know, like not every game needs to wow me. It just needs to be moderately interesting. And mm -hmm. then I try it and see if it does wow me or not. And, you know, every game has the chance to be Fire Emblem, Three Houses, yeah. you know, um, which I think was another thing that that is to um, Xbox's advantage. The mm -hmm. something that I... I Think that they all suffer from though is that 75 percent of these games all look the same <laughs> they all look the same it was either a shooty shooty game or it was uh you know like a skyrim sort of situation mm -hmm. it's either high fantasy you give the space marine a, a gun mm -hmm. or you know like it's cuphead and that that's like the the, the other 30 percent is like the random wacky stuff which is yeah was the more interesting stuff to be fair to me yeah. oh for sure yeah i mean i I did feel like of basically any presentation that's not Nintendo's, I felt like this was the most varied one mm -hmm. in just the longest time, you know? Um, so that's nice. But yeah, basically, um, wait, what's this thing? Oh, that's the extended showcase. Okay. never mind. I was trying to look up a list of everything at, um, their show, but yeah, I mean like there was something I don't care about like Redfall particularly, but I know some people do and there's various other, I'm just scrolling through the trailers. Um, and you know, like 
the Forza stuff, it's like that is very impressive that Forza Motorsport is doing all the things that it's doing. But I don't really care about that. But then right after that, there was what was it? I just saw something else that I don't know. There was other stuff that was more interesting. So it was nice to just see some variety at all. But yeah, I, I definitely feel you there. Um, and, but like you said, the fact that it's all on game past really just like if there's anything that's kind of interesting that right. i don't really know anything about just like yeah go ahead and check it out because you can so exactly. overall i mean i i generally I, I mean literally i watched about two minutes of the starfield stuff and was like i'm you know i'll find out about this later i don't mm-hmm. really care right now um so once that was on i was kind of out but otherwise i skipped through some of it because i yeah i paused it at one point and then just like was catching back up to the live show and so i saw things but didn't like really look into them but for the most part it was just a fun watch and like if nothing else if all it provided was entertainment while watching it that's cool Mm -hmm. you know i'm down for that people like watching trailers before movies this was something in that ilk if nothing else um but like silk song showed up there and that was pretty cool yeah i was like what the hell? and that being on game pass like yeah yeah. that man like (laughs) come on dude Uh uh-huh and it's i mean it is a nice thing too because like that's the kind of game that i think a lot of people are going to want to buy somewhere as well so that and they also are getting all the game pass money and so that's nice so like it's a win-win for for team cherry i wish we knew the date but yeah i don't really care it'll be whenever it is and that's fine according to xbox sometime in the next 12 months that's true yeah so yeah it was good stuff they, they did good it it felt very different from like you said as well from this state of play and every, and Which, not even just sony everybody else did uh, terribly yeah. in this regard um, I mean, I only compared it to Sony's because that was the only. One, I didn't really one feel that, yeah. that was the only one that was like felt much like a presentation, yeah. as it were. Even though other ones happened, I mean, because like to, Capcom, to be fair, right? They were also like the the oh. only real sin <laughs> that I feel Capcom <laughs> committed is like they just reannounced a bunch of stuff, um, right. yeah. And then it's like, oh, here's the Resident Evil thing or whatever, right? Like that. That was really the only like brand new info is that. Mm-hmm. It was like uh, you could play as Lady Demetresque or whatever, um, yeah. and the PC version of Resident Evil Eight or something. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. It was just a bunch of like, here's stuff that we announced at other places again for longer. Yeah, like they the, the, there was like three or four different events that had Street Fighter Six at it, and I'm like, I don't need to see Street Fighter Six this many times. I'm gonna play it for <laughs> sure, definitely. But yeah. I do not need you to show me. D- hadouken at this many different freaking presentations <laughs> yeah no i feel that i i think the shows that kind of i don't know if saved summer game fest or anything like that is the right word because definitely not but like the shows that felt like oh those are pretty good ones i that i didn't actually watch live were like the indie direct kinds yeah. of shows yep. um like the wholesome direct i just caught like the um uh who was that? Uh, Ryan, right? From Super Weird Games, I think. Um, doesn't matter. Some other, I've followed some people's just like tweets of like this announcement and this announcement mm. and this announcement. And there's some really cool stuff there. I only know um, some of them because youth. She likes mm, mm-hmm. like cozy games. And I was yep. like, oh, wholesome. Like that's a, wholesome games. They exist. Like is, yep. that's a thing you know about, right? She didn't know about it. Uh, uh, so then I like like I was talking to her and she was like watching through it. She was like, "Oh, this game! I, I totally <laughs> will play this." And I, I was like, "Yep, yeah, mm-hmm, sure, yeah, you surely will." Uh, yeah. So I know some of the wholesome direct stuff, but I didn't watch mm-hmm. that one. I just know that it happened. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, it was. There's yeah. So like those kinds of things, you know. There's always cool indies coming out. So like that's always fun. They just don't get the same spotlight in the industry i feel like that they could or should so i wish they would but still they at least have other places that they can kind of shine now so that's nice Mm -hmm. so that's summer games fest guys good job there it is now the last thing Um, left is nintendo direct and i feel like even again removed from and uh, not in a nintendo way but in the sense that like i have a very particular way that i think presentation should be done um mm-hmm. because 
in my opinion there's no real reason to do a presentation unless you do all of these things um mm -hmm. like th there's definitely bias there it's not a nintendo specific bias because there's a lot of times right. where a lot of the announcements that are announced in nintendo directs i don't particularly care for personally mm -hmm. but i am able to see like okay they announced that i know a lot of people care about that okay they announced mm -hmm. that i know a lot of people care about that you know i think that nintendo is going to have the best presentation in that way because mm -hmm. they usually do like it, it it feels like throughout the years and i'm going to do deeper uh, more involved research in this because i do want to make a video comparing nintendo directs to other presentations it feels yeah. like they just got it figured out they know how to do presentations better than yeah. everybody else everybody yep i mean i know i was listening to the kitten krista podcast like i don't know a couple weeks ago and they were talking about nintendo directs and basically just like that there's you know there's a formula at this point and like obviously there is like we know that um but their formula works and has also informed kind of everything else mm -hmm. um and so you know even as long as the content within that is pretty good or then it should be fine you know so like um and even they were also saying you know who uh i think i think kit had specifically put together some director like was in charge of getting announcements together for directors something like that mm -hmm. um and was agreeing that like no direct ever again is gonna like meet all of your expectations and needs because like stuff has to be spread out so like right no, you know don't expect any of them to blow you away which i thought was like i don't know good to hear from because from somebody that's in the know and like you know on the inside of that kind of a thing because that's definitely true and i think people are typically expecting the moon in a lot of regards and we kind of have to like sometimes with these conversations help t tailor expectations to like no like we'll get like two or three new new first party announcements maybe and then you know this that or the other and like but it'll be a fun time and so yeah right and that is i think they just generally are good so there it is yeah and also i wonder yeah if you know if the direct really is around the last week of june basically uh -huh. um I do wonder if some of that is just to stay as far away from the summer games fest as possible to not be associated with it. Cause it yeah. really seems like they're trying to just not be associated with right. that. Cause I could easily see if they, if it happened to be during the week of summer games fest, the Jeff, Jeff Keighley, Keighley would tweet out something and be like, and be like yeah. summer games fest. Right. And they would have to specifically either go along with it and say nothing which would probably be the easier thing to do PR wise or literally be like, this is not affiliated with yeah. summer games. Fest, which, which people be... would be mad about. Yeah, yeah. That wouldn't go over well right. at all. So, yeah. you know, so. feels like the safer bet to just, um, move also, it all I, I think it's pretty in line with what we talked about last week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it was like, I think it's going to be in July or close to July. If it's <laughs> yeah. going to happen, because again, it's just when it's not even necessary. It's not even like an inside for like insiders. I just pay attention to to trends. And it mm -hmm. just does seem like whenever people like get their like, like they start to like set their clock to something. Nintendo's <laughs> like, ah, nah, I think I'm going to do this instead. So the yeah. second that people were like, oh, it's going to come this week because they usually do it. I was like, it's not. <laughs> it's not going <laughs> to. It's going to come any time but that. Uh, yeah. So I, I think that this this makes a lot of sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's true. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's all the news we got. And now some games that we're playing. <laughs> Here we go. Um, I've got a couple. Yeah, I'll, I've, just, few, I've got a couple. I have a few too. I have a lot, a lot to talk about. <laughs> you have a lot to talk about? Uh, a decent I... amount to talk about, yes. Interesting. I'm uh -huh. curious what yours is. I'll go ahead and start with one real quick. Um, Cloud Gardens. This um, got a review copy from, um, from Jack over at why am i blanking all of a sudden uh, from code sync. And code, code sync, sync. thank yeah. you very much my brain exploded um from code sync who did fogs and also cake bash mm -hmm. and also islanders which everybody knows i played a whole lot of and is really really good um and it's like five bucks and i know it's not everybody's cup of tea because i know like you played it a little bit and you're like yeah that's okay but like probably wouldn't want to play that much more and i, I know at least one other person that got it on my recommendation and was like i don't know if this is for me 
but I loved it. So that was great. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. this game's called Cloud Gardens and it came out yesterday. Well, two days ago, if you're listening to, it came out on the 16th. Do with that what you will in relation to your current day, <laughs> wherever you are <laughs> in time. Um, and it's, it's interesting. So it's kind of like, um, I haven't gotten like super far in it particularly, but it's a super just like chill, kind of relaxing sort of puzzle game and kind of like Islanders as well in some regards. Like I know Coatsing is the publisher. I haven't looked to see if it's the same developer as um, Islanders, but it might be. In any case, the way this works is like, there's little like kind of, I don't know, maybe dystopian sort of looking tiny little um, location or something so like um, like a side of like very a, small like a sandbox yeah basically like a little sandbox of like the corner of a sidewalk kind of floating in nothingness fog or whatever mm-hmm. and that's just got like some graffiti on it and like a fence or something like that um, and you like plant a seed of some uh, like vine plant kind of thing mm. and then have to place uh, like other you know like tires and cones and various like things that would sort of like fit in that environment i've only gotten there it seems like there's a couple of different worlds that are different like environment and the ones i've done so far are all like highway sort of vibe um, like sidewalks and those kinds of things and as you place more of the like this kind of stuff the p- vines will like feed off of the dystopian <laughs> things basically. And so like will grow accordingly. And so you're trying to grow the vines to a certain amount with the amount of things that you have. So it's not so far, at least not particularly challenging. Like there's a couple where I, I guess messed up and had uh, how far are you restart in it? I'm uh, probably like 12 levels in something like that. Like how long is that? Um, not very like each one's probably like, three or four minutes so far Uh, okay that's what i was was looking for an hour number (laughs) oh gotcha so yeah i mean i don't know probably probably played like 30 45 minutes maybe an hour so far but like looking at looking at pictures online definitely some of the environments that show up on here are bigger than the ones that i've done by a decent amount so i feel like they're like the puzzles are pretty or the environments are pretty quick and easy so far um and it's i think more than anything it's just kind of supposed to be a relaxing thing where there's progress for the sake of progress but otherwise it's kind of just building these nice little kind of chill looking um you know sort of dystopian areas so yeah pretty fun i think it's like 13 bucks or something like that on the e-shop and it's out now so if you want to go check it out go for it nice so that's one of the things i'm playing yeah thanks jack facts all right what about you you got some stories to tell it sounds like okay so uh i'll start with breath of the wild i beat the, oh, yes, i beat indeed. the breath of the wild uh champions ballad dlc uh uh-huh. it was a good time this was yes. another one of those situations where like people were telling me like oh this is a hard one man like oh about the final boss? yeah like this okay. is the hardest boss in the game and i'm like mm-hmm, mm-hmm, sure definitely. maybe he is i beat him for First try though for sure <laughs> yeah 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 same yeah. same 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 here um yep. and i was like I, that said definitely the coolest one for sure like that that, oh, that sure. boss fight yeah, is yeah. very cool um mm-hmm. it, yeah like it was the the hardest part about it the hardest part in quotes mm-hmm. um about yeah. it is the, the freaking shadow clones man it was like what the heck mm-hmm. but you just use their bros as fury and then they just oh, they, they just all die <laughs> um yep. so so like that was the thing but like i spent like a very long time on the puzzle the the freaking yeah. divine beast Th- mm-hmm. that's just that is my relationship with breath of the wild in general um mm-hmm. is i spent like a long time mostly because i don't really care to figure out the way that they want me to do it i try to figure out any other yeah, way right. but that and that results in me <laughs> taking a long time because i feel like if you're just trying to be straightforward it's probably faster but that's not fun yeah. uh so like there was there was like i took a beam a steel beam from later in the like or a, um uh one of the divine beasts 
locks or whatever that you're supposed to do later mm -hmm. um i took it from that and i like freaking portaled it i like like portal in the sense of the video game i like took it and i carried uh -huh. it to a different part of the map because i was like i'm gonna use this and then i had to freaking take that and then get it out of the area that it was in and it was very clearly mm -hmm. not meant to you're not supposed to do that <laughs> so it took me forever to try to get the door to like open and stay open so, so that i can yeah. pull it through the door and bring that so then that took me a minute and then there was just other things about like I was talking about puzzles and just 3D games in general. They tend to like most of the quote unquote puzzle is finding the pieces to the puzzle. And right, that yeah. was very annoying, except for the last puzzle, which was very cool because it was the opposite of that. It was like, here's stuff that is in this room. Here's everything that you have available to you. You can see it now. Mm -hmm. but how does this get you to the next part? You know, like those are actual puzzles, but those are like the puzzles that I think, uh, should be prioritized and exclusively mm -hmm. made to be honest in 3d games yeah. because it's not it's not a a, a challenge a direct challenge it's a, a challenge in a roundabout way because it tests your patience to to go mm -hmm. in a wild goose goose hunt like yeah i don't freak you know like i don't feel accomplished because i found this random spot on the map that you're that you wanted me to go to to find the piece of the puzzle to figure out where to put the piece of the puzzle i'm just frustrated mm -hmm. that you didn't just give me the piece of the puzzle <laughs> like if i bought a puzzle and the box was like the last piece is you know and it like freaking gives me a riddle i'm tight yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah no i feel that for sure yeah i think i mean in general the the Divine Beasts were probably, for a couple of reasons, definitely not my favorite part of my favorite game of all time. Like, they just... I, I bet if the aesthetics were better, it would have helped a little bit. But overall, it definitely felt like such a departure from kind of the rest of the game. And honestly, like, even... Which is a little surprising because I, I actually really like all the shrines. And some of the shrines also have pretty particular ways that you do them but um i think the sh when i go into a shrine i have the expectation of what that's supposed to feel like and it matches that expectation whereas getting to the divine beasts what i expect those to feel like are not what they actually are you know like it i, I and i don't know exactly what i want that to feel like either but something different <laughs> so i feel that Justin says, but riddles are puzzles. They're definitely not puzzles in the way that a tangible puzzle is a puzzle. And you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it, it's not the same thing that puzzles in any other game prior to three, the third dimension, <laughs> when mm -hmm. they give you the thing and they're like, all right, here's the pieces, figure it out. Mm -hmm. Finding the piece shouldn't be a puzzle, especially yeah. since it's usually not a direct riddle in the sense of like what's black and blue and like red all over <laughs> you know like it, yeah. it's not it's not that <laughs> right mm -hmm. or black and white and red all over um <laughs> i was gonna say black and blue interesting yeah, yeah yeah it's not like that sort of thing where it's like here's all the things that you're supposed to do now how do they fit together to make the the end result you know mm -hmm. i think to to justin's point here he said, I expected the Divine Beasts to be harder. That was my biggest gripe with them. But that's coming from someone whose favorite part of the game were the shrines. I think for me, maybe I wasn't hoping that the Divine Beasts would specifically be harder, but that they'd feel more grandiose. And I don't think they did. And I, 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 I the closest one to that, I feel like kind of the um, Urbosa's one, uh, the camel one. Yeah sort of did because i don't know something about that it felt you know bigger or something and so i don't know that i have like an exact answer for what i want that to feel like but um yeah shrines basically the expectation versus reality of shrines matched up a lot better than they did for divine beasts for right. me and i feel like they th should have gone in one direction or the other either right. made them a lot bigger and more complicated or or made them more you know actiony and less either more like dungeons or less like dungeons but the amount that they were like dungeons was a weird i'll also amount. say that for what it's worth i think divine beast on like the base level are designed mm -hmm. in that way where they give you everything that you are the intent is here's mm -hmm. everything you need for this puzzle 
here's the divine beast and the movements that it makes that will influence the other things in this room so that other things happen but yeah and some of them it's like all right find the thing that you need to influence <laughs> so that and that's 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 yeah. annoying that's bad and it, it it's again not even a direct riddle where it's like oh where's this thing it's like all right aimlessly explore quote unquote until you find this thing that looks suspicious enough but like, oh, maybe i need to influence this with the <laughs> way the divine beast moves you know right um if the whole thing is like that where it's like all right here are these like inherent tools and like uh mechanics of this area that you're in it will do something to everything in your immediate vision like like line of sight um mm -hmm. what how do you progress with that yeah that is that i think is how to best design stuff like that mm -hmm. no, that makes sense speaking of traditional zelda and earlier speaking of n64 um i started at ocarina of time last night <laughs> for some reason i Ew. <laughs> yeah no it's yeah so i don't know just yesterday i opened up my switch and i was like i don't know what i want to play because like i don't want to do something that's going to require too much thinking and work and also don't want to just i don't know the, i didn't know what to play so i opened mm -hmm. up 64 and i was like all right let's just get started with ocarina of time so i got through um the great deku tree so far and i had a good time it was you know like it's at this point it's also just nostalgic and i'm down with that um so yeah there's some of the stuff where it's definitely like it it's obtuse in a way that was nice for uh you know eight-year-old parker who had nothing better to do to mm -hmm. just like wander around kukiri village for stumbling into the thing that you're supposed to do and probably if i'd like talked to some people in town i would have remembered where i was supposed to get the shield but like i you have to get your sword and your shield and so the sword i just like went to where i thought maybe you had to get it and i was right so that was nice and then i just like wandered around went to the lost woods did various things got 40 rupees by accident just through various things and then wandered into the shop where you buy a shield for 40 rupees and maybe there's somewhere else to get one i don't remember but i was like oh cool i've got exactly 40 rupees and then bought it and all that stuff but yeah so at this point my brain i'm definitely on half autopilot and half figuring it out again because it's been probably 15 years since i've played ocarina of time something like that so but that said it's just a nice little refresher to play it again and so far i'm enjoying it i don't know how much longer i'll get in it maybe i'll just like open it one more time maybe i'll beat the whole game or anywhere in between <laughs> so yeah but i think i mean for what it's worth that's i that is what i was not enjoying that much about skyward sword was that like i'm not in a mood particularly to aimlessly wander around areas now like with the yeah. new game like it's one thing when i, I have think the memories i think there. that that exactly that's the difference like you're not yeah. endlessly wandering around to like figure out something that you don't know right yeah. like it's it's more like a routine that you go through like uh trying mm -hmm. to find where you're freaking where you put your glasses and it's dark yeah. in the room you know like uh -huh. you, you know in the general vicinity where you had to walk to find your glasses mm -hmm. um but like in a place that you've never been Mm -hmm. find somebody else's glasses now <laughs> like that's yep. the that's the difference <laughs> yeah and i think it's you know like and then it's just a question of like what's your what's your gaming landscape look like because honestly twilight princess same thing but again when i played twilight princess i quite enjoyed it because it was the only game that i owned and was playing at the time it was yeah it was know, the same yeah, experience pre-switch and i was just like it, it was Here the we go. same it's... experience that you had with ocarina of the time when you were younger it was like all right exactly I have time yeah. and I want to play and this now, specific game, you know, like, yeah, that's just not a thing anymore. And so right. I think probably what I would do at, it, with certain games along those lines is like, I could just use a review or not a review, uh, a, a guide through. if I wanted to, yeah. but I don't know. I just don't know that I want to do that with you. Like, I think I had enough small frustrations with Skyward Sword that I was like, I don't really feel like doing it. So I just didn't. Yep. Um, but but yeah, Ocarina of Time, having a fun time with it. Also, real quick, my I think the last one probably, um, besides been playing some more Mario Kart for reasons that hopefully, uh, yeah, it works in progress. I 
launched your New Zealand account and I played mm-hmm. half of a round of Mario Strikers. And I was like, you know what? This game obviously is probably built and balanced very well and all that. I don't care one bit about the gameplay and I'm bad at it. So <laughs> I, I, I mean, I just played with CPUs and I didn't go back through the tutorial. I just tried to vaguely remember what I remembered from the tutorial from when I played it like a month ago. Didn't remember enough, obviously. And yeah, soccer games are definitely not up my alley. So I just stopped. Um, so that's my experience with Mario Strikers. I'm not uh, that was it. another game. I'm still playing that uh nice. freaking for the most part still cracked uh but <laughs> but and for what it's worth me i'm kind of opposite of that in, in that mm-hmm. regard where it's like i didn't i didn't go through the tutorial i went through the tutorial mm-hmm. on stream before the game came out because i wanted yep. to play the game before the game came out um mm-hmm. on stream um but like i don't learn like that i don't want you yeah. to, to to tutorialize stuff directly in that way I just want to do mm-hmm. it. Um, and that's how I'm learning the game is just doing it, uh, which yep. is working pretty well. The only thing that I don't like is that the goalie sucks. The goalie is terrible. Like mm. if I like Flame. I want to say 75 percent or even 80 percent of the times <laughs> that I lose a game, I feel like I lost the game because my goalie did not want to defend. Like there's <laughs> so many like of those like uh, um, instant replays of the goalie mm-hmm. having his hand up and putting his hand down and then the ball going in the goal. Like, it's like you literally went out of your way. You literally threw. You literally threw. Yeah. <laughs> uh, man. And for just for the record, I'm definitely in no way saying that it's a bad game or anything. It's just not a game for you. Yeah. It's not a game for me. And because I didn't buy it, I don't have the incentive to like, to figure it out want to care about it so it was i was just playing it for the research i mean same goes for like i um yeah i like golf games fine i think you know i I really enjoyed golf story and all that blah blah blah. but um played a little bit of your mario golf copy and because i didn't buy it and was playing other things at the time i just like never really spent the time trying to get into it and Mm -hmm. i know that i would have liked it but I just am okay to have not like played it. Also, all. I and think so, it, it's yeah. it, well. I I don't know. I think that Mario Strikers, if you like the game itself, it does have enough of the type of crap that you like when you play a game because there's just mm. a lot of stuff to unlock. Um, yeah, right. So it's it's like Mario Kart ish in that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you I don't enjoy the, the core between gameplay, is, unlocking right, yeah. yeah, unlocking gear like in Mario Kart. Eight mm-hmm. is definitely less incentive than unlocking characters and mm-hmm. like courses and stuff right like it sh- you know should be and it sounds like unless i'm wrong it in mario strikers it's m- unlocking gear it's like part, gear right? but also like depending on if you do the the uh, what's it called the uh the like league mode or whatever like mm-hmm. you can unlock mm-hmm. items for your stadium oh okay gotcha well, that's fun uh, but, but yeah, yeah, it has a lot of stuff like that. And it, it's like nice. a long, a long road to unlock all this stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. If you're, if, if it's like a completionist sort of situation, mm-hmm. like it doesn't take that long to have a team like that's, you could do that pretty instantly, honestly. But yeah. if you like, just want to be a completionist and have everything, like have all the options to change all my stats in any kind of way that I want, <laughs> it will take yeah. a very long time. Um, but yeah, uh, Mario Strikers. I'm not. I don't think I want to play on. Sh- well, then again, I think next week is when the the uh, the the first season starts. Oh, if I'm not right, if I'm not wrong, Trev, is that correct? Me if I'm wrong, if you know. Um, like man said. But then I'll probably play it on stream if it starts. But mm-hmm. I, there's I don't want to play it endlessly for no reason. So yeah, I will play it more on stream. Trev said it's correct. Um, so I will be playing it on a stream when I have something to work towards, then it, then, uh, you know, I have a reason to play it. Um, but yeah, also playing that. Mm-hmm. You playing when you say next else? week, is that like in two days next week or next Friday next week or something? Uh, sometime post Sunday. <laughs> That's cool. what I, I mean. <laughs> there we go. Are you playing anything else? I don't think so. Yeah, pretty sure that's I'm playing uh, one more it. thing that's not Smash. I'm oh, well, actually two more things. That's not even true. 
uh i was playing i freaking started playing um project plus with mars yeah okay uh it's freaking it's still cracked with pokemon trainer dude it, but mm -hmm. pokemon trainer doesn't exist Pokemon that's brawl with melee yeah is that right no it, well okay. yeah it's a it's a brawl rom hack that was made by people that are melee fans so it's like yeah. melee sensibilities in brawl's engine um yeah. And in this game, Pokemon Trainer is three separate characters, and their moves are different. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just playing all three randomly when mm -hmm. I feel like it. I, that said, I think Charizard is not like Charizard is not intuitive to me at all. Like, and it, mm -hmm. it's funny because it's like they kind of line up almost one to one to how I feel about them in Ultimate, where it's like. Ivysaur, for whatever reason, is supernatural to me. Like, I, I pick mm -hmm. up Ivysaur and I know exactly what this character wants to do. My hands just get it, you know? <laughs> um, Squirtle, not so much, but like, I can do well enough. Charizard mm -hmm. makes no sense. It's completely opposite of how I would normally play the video game. Yeah. Um, so, like, that's where I'm at with these characters uh, currently. But mm -hmm. Squirtle is like, e like, in ultimate squirtle is super complex and he is definitely the, the the character that like mastering him will push you the furthest with the character mm -hmm. overall mm -hmm. um that is doubled if not mm -hmm. more than that in this video game because squirtle has a whole bunch of like hidden mechanics like his his turnaround animation has a a, a hitbox <laughs> His, um, he like, he like dashes and sometimes when you dash, I don't know exactly what you need to do for this interaction to happen. Um, cause I literally just started playing this game today. Mm -hmm. Um, he goes in his shell sometimes and just, I'm like, yo, what the heck? Why am I in my shell? Um, that's another part that's weird. He has a crawl attack. Like he has a, an attack that is specific to when he crawls, which no mm -hmm. other character that I know of has. Um, also, this is not an attack, but he, if he taunts and you, you press the B button at the right time, he pulls out the Squirtle Squad glasses. <laughs> That's awesome. Is uh, it out of curiosity? Does it uh, learning this move set does that mess up your ultimate move set? I don't know. I haven't played ultimate since oh, uh, since I played this game, um, no. but I doubt it because because like i hear like the thing about it is i'm using the same controller not the same exact controller because i have a whole bunch of pro controllers i'm using a pro controller the the button inputs are exactly the same so i i don't think it'll be any different from just playing a a, a different character in ultimate you right. know like i i play other or i know how to play other characters when i play sephiroth it doesn't make me forget how to play Squirtle and and yeah. Ultimate, so I would assume that it's not too different in that in that regard, uh, or not too different from that. So we'll see, but I doubt it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'll probably play more of that. The game's pretty fun. Uh, mm -hmm. There's no real uh, reason behind it other than just uh, my Ultimate matchmaking is freaking cringe right now um mm -hmm. like people are like it's just getting blatant like i fought multiple people where the screen went black when they're losing <laughs> like they would wow. be losing yeah. and i like i i literally sent the video to mars and i could i could post the video people want to see the video but i was fighting a sheep <laughs> and the sheep could not literally could not touch me and my screen went black and then they mm -hmm. got an advantage state and they hit me <laughs> And then the, the the game was normal for the rest of it. So it's like, uh, yeah. it's freaking <laughs> disgusting, man. Like they they really got to fix the ultimate online because it feels like it's easy to exploit. Because I or they put me in a in a like I got reported too much for for being cracked, and they mm -hmm. put me in like a cheater's <laughs> lobby or something. I don't know. Yeah, it's funny. super nasty. Yeah. Well, shit. And you said there was one more game that you're playing um pokemon sword trying another nuzlocke run trying it again mm. but this time the rules are different uh because like and turns out originally like the original rules that i did i didn't even put in the rules that i couldn't heal during battles that was just an additional thing that i imposed upon myself um mm -hmm. so this time i can heal it's limited though um mm -hmm. so i can use items in battle to heal uh three times per gym badge and they stack plus one per Pokemon. So right mm -hmm. now, I think I have 10 total heals to use because I'm on the first gym badge and I caught a Pokemon. 
I caught nice. some Pokemon. Fun times. So yeah, exactly. Good stuff. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's that's. I think that's all the games that I'm playing. Yeah. I think likewise. Well, yeah. I actually, I'll have a question regarding one of mine for that. I'll ask the peanut gallery afterwards. So. Okay. So um, with that, Q and A. It's time for Q and A. Look at that. We're here. All right, we got a question from Twitter. Poofy Rain asked, uh, "This past two weeks, video game showcases is popping up all over the place, and it's hard to keep track. Do these prove that we need an E3 to have more of a structure schedule so that people can have one place to watch the presentations they want?" And follow up question: Which presentation did you guys enjoy so far? First, you know, Justin said, is it no item to everyone plays Pokemon? Absolutely not. <laughs> no. I, I, don't, I don't mean like a I mean, I guess items. other than like challenge I mean runs. like potions right. and, and stuff like that. Like, no. <laughs> mm-hmm. People use items all the time in Nuzlocks. <laughs> oh, in Nuzlocks. Yeah, yeah. I, see what you're saying. I think yeah. he just said Pokemon in general. But, but yeah, like right. even in Nuzlocks, a lot of people just straight up use items. Yes. Like potions and stuff. Because I guess, yeah, I, I, you know, watch like my dry breads videos and stuff, the Pokemon challenges, and those are very much not Nuzlocke's in that regard. I mean, they're, you know, mm-hmm. obviously they're also challenges, but it's a different thing entirely. And those right. are typically itemless, but yeah, interesting that in Nuzlocke's they will use um, So, yeah. <laughs> Justin, I don't think I've used an item like potions since Gen One. I've definitely—I mean, I don't know if I used them in battle barely at all. M- maybe some, yeah, probably. Uh, but definitely outside of battle, if like I'm on the road to somewhere and I don't want to go all the way back to a Poke Center or something like that, then yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I don't know, but either way, and yeah. it, it is not. It is not feasible in this game, <laughs> unless you go to I, the. Yeah, no, that's that's a whole different thing. Going to the Pokemon Center, I'm streaming it, so uh-huh. I don't want to go back to the Pokemon Center and heal uh-huh. every time that I'm close to death. I want to have forward momentum. <laughs> <laughs> also, I mean, then again, I do feel the just, just since the Pokemon Center is due for free, you're losing money, man. What a like that is. RPG fans, yeah, no, I'm not just doing like that. <laughs> that's ingrained into us of like you finish a game with like uh, use it as little resources, five hundred thousand monies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I I never so often yeah in games I just don't use resources because I'm like well maybe later I'm gonna need I might it. and need then like this. Yeah. especially if later you know um I don't know something like Golden Sun. There's some items that deal damage, for example, and I would intentionally not use them in battle because, like, I'll save them for when I really need it. And then, like down the road, the items I got early on to do the damage in battle is like not very much damage anymore, so it's just useless at that point. So just sell it, you know. So it's, uh, it's. Silly the the difference goes, is just like getting doctrine. If a Pokemon dies in your run. It's like, I have other Pokemon and I can just go to the Pokemon Center. If a Pokemon dies in this Nuzlocke run, people get mad at me because I don't get to use the Pokemon (laughs) anymore. So it's it's more of a precaution for that. Like, I almost beat it anyway, even with those additional stipulations. But people get Uh mad about Bev Boys dying and stuff. It's (laughs) freaking, you know? So this this was throwing them a bone. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. I literally almost Googled Bev Boy to see what Pokemon that was. But I'm dumb because <laughs> that's not how that works. There's that multiple Bev boys. Pokemon you name. There's, oh, there's the first Bev oh, boy, and that one was Sable, who died mm-hmm. in yeah, a gym. Of course. Uh, Rough. Was it a gym? It might have not been a gym. It might have been. All my Pokemon die when I'm trying to catch a different Pokemon or during yeah. a gym. <laughs> that, the, the, that is the, the, the yeah. guarantee. It's a 50 50. If I die, it's trying to catch something else or trying to beat somebody that is a gym leader. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and mm-hmm. freaking yeah, no. So, Bev Boy one that was that was Sable. Who was Bev Boy two? Was there? Th- it was three Bev Boys and a Bev Girl, I think. Mm-hmm. But I don't remember. I think Bev Boy two was um, no, Bev Boy three was uh, uh, uh Dracovish. But mm-hmm. I don't remember who Bev Boy two is. 
Um, and I think Bev it? Girl was like freaking Wiggly Tough or something, <laughs> or uh, <laughs> Clip Abel or whatever. <laughs> That's funny. Alec literally has Bev Boy too. True, 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 true. Draco Vicious okay. two. I thought Draco Vicious was three, or maybe we didn't get to three. Three might have been when we 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 did Bev Girl because you said I can't call, mm. I can't name any more Pokemon Bev Boy. Um, which I only don't do when she's there. <laughs> so if she's not there, then it's it's open season. <laughs> um, I said he's doing great. Does he does he ever talk about AJ? Is that does he miss? Him? He's or... level one hundred now. <laughs> Damn. Uh, yeah. Okay. Back to the question. Um. So what do you think? <laughs> Bet point two eight AJ. Uh, um. So yeah, do do all these presentations prove that we need something like E3 to have more of a structured schedule so people can have one place to watch these presentations that they want? No. What do you think? I don't. I don't think that. Um, I think I, because yeah, I ahead. think that either way, people are going to watch what they care about after the fact. Like most people do not watch E3. <laughs> believe it or not like most people are yeah. going to after the fact like oh what got announced that i care about and that's what matters is having that be available um and it's not like these presentations for the people that do watch e3 like their viewership is any less than normal you know what i mean yeah so right. it's, exactly. it's it's like eh we don't really need that like th there might be specific people that feel like they need that because they want that structure and they want to be able to like take off of work and you know but i think that that's hyper specific and it doesn't really like speak to the the grand scheme of things you know yep yeah i think for sure there's like at this point now that e3 hasn't happened this year and all that like like we've talked about, a bunch of these companies just need to like not try to announce stuff if they don't have anything to announce and then just wait and announce it later and have their whole own yeah. slot in the third week of July, you know? And yep. that's going to turn out great for them. Like there is, there are times of year that would be bad to announce stuff, you know, like the week of Christmas. Don't announce anything the week of Christmas. That's going to be a mistake. Right. But literally like almost any other time, you know, like as long as you're smart about it, any time is fine and you can have your own moment in the sun. But like, I think these companies have gotten so used to this and probably like there's some uh some factors we're not thinking about like um shareholders and stuff like yeah, that that's exactly what it is i think that the 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 reason that e3 and game presentations and stuff like that existed in the way that they did for so long is logistically mm -hmm. It, you couldn't just do a, a like turnkey presentation. You couldn't do that. Yeah. You needed to hire so many people. You need to do the marketing around it and so on and so forth. Um, and then also stuff like shareholders, like there's shareholder meetings and all this stuff is like, you know, scheduled. It's quarterly and all that stuff. So they want to have like things in the news cycle and in the zeitgeist that people are talking mm -hmm. about to brag about to their shareholders. Now, though, they can do that whenever because the first problem does not exist anymore. It's very easy yeah. to just, you know, like make a pre-edited thing and then make it a YouTube premiere. Like that is not anybody can do that. We could do that, <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. like <laughs> and if a, a single person can do it, a multi-billion dollar corporation can very easily do it, you know, so that that's mm -hmm. why it's like E3 is like a product of a time where it was necessary, but now it is not. Yeah. So it's like, eh, like there, there's there's things that game fans have planned their lives around uh, or the way that it was presented before. And that made it feel mm -hmm. that makes it feel more necessary. But like, you just got to get used to like the new normal and plan around that. Yeah. You know? Yep. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, I fully agree with that. And then as far as like most pre presentation enjoyed so far the most personally. Yeah. Probably the Xbox one, just because I only really watched two anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the one that I liked the most of those two. But um, yeah, mean. Xbox. Xbox is the one that mm -hmm. I, I think I like the most. Um, yep. But mm. Mm. from um, what I saw from, Discord, from sorry, Square ahead. Enix, like <laughs> for people that care about Square Enix, they did a pretty good job. I think that the mobile game mm -hmm. thing was an L. But again, that's a shareholder situation. And also yeah, the merch. Right. Again, shareholder situation. Mm -hmm. um, but like they, they did announce like, here's the thing that you want. 
<laughs> present. Yeah, and as Justin pointed out too, future. it's stuff that's coming out within a year, a year and a half, or something like that. Yeah, like, and that's good. That's true, yeah, but also I think that. that a year and a half is too long. Um, but <laughs> but yeah, like they they did the 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 like I think that the Metroid Prime thing, right? Where I said I don't think it's I think it's ill advised to announce mm-hmm. Metroid Prime Four because look at where we're at now, but. I do get why they did it, and it does make sense that they're like, all right, people, the thing that you want is still coming, but here's something else that we're working on that you also might like and won't be angry about if you know that the thing that you want is on the way. Um, so yeah. I get it, but... I, oh, side note, just accurate. a thought. Um, adding to my um, direct predictions from last week, um, Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster coming to Switch, I'm guessing. It gets announced in this next one. True, not, true, 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 like, true, true, true. How are those not on Switch? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that's yeah. just throwing that out there. Um, so yeah, okay. Questions from Discord. We got Sardi asked, said, "Random thought today. Part of the issue with buying physical media is that day one patching and later DLC renders it's always playable argument a bit weaker. When I get indie releases from limited run games, it's way later and is fully patched. Do you think there's a market for Nintendo to re-release all their games two to three years later?" as complete editions so that we can have full confidence that it's fully patched and DLC'd when we pop them into our future retro consoles, zero download necessary. Uh, define a market, you know, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, I think that like, if they did that, they'd probably sell like conservatively a hundred thousand extra units, right? Mm-hmm. For that specific audience, because I don't think that, a lot of people even if they would benefit from that they wouldn't know to look for that <laughs> and mm-hmm. even when they do like the player's choice situations unless they're significantly cheaper which no on nintendo this probably mm-hmm. would not be um i don't think that that would be like something that people would run to the store to do um yeah. especially if like they could just buy the game and play the game when they want to play the game and then even if they don't have internet they could take their portable switch console and then go to like anywhere that has an internet connection and install it there you know yeah and i guess um, the use case is like you know years down the road when you can't do that anymore because the servers are down and blah 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 which is a true but mm-hmm. also b maybe not as true as has been the case with everything else you know like this is obviously just parker's opinion but i think we're into the age where it's possible that that kind of thing shouldn't be happening anymore. You know, we're still going to lose access to some stuff for sure, but not nearly as much stuff in my just, you know, right. Especially like the, 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 the more people make noise about it, the more they'll care to, you know, like make sure that it, it doesn't, happen yeah right because like, like the infrastructure for the 3ds and the wii u or whatever were built for the 3ds and the wii u right as their own things not with any kind of this library in will live and die with this specific <laughs> piece of hardware yeah. not this yep. platform your specific wii u with this serial number you know like that that and yeah. it's no longer exactly like so what i do think is you know i could be cool is if they end up doing like a Nintendo selects kind of thing. And then those ones have all that stuff. Right. Like if they and, do, you know, like, I think that the, the answer to this is like, if they do release something like that, like a definitive edition or whatever, it should mm-hmm. be the current patch. Right. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that that would be something that in and of itself is marketable or like needed in the grand scheme yeah. of things um Mm -hmm. to justify it you know like if if they feel like it's not worth having a specific game in print anymore i don't think that they would change their mind if they if they had the epiphany that it's like oh shoot what if we make it a fully updated thing um that sort of situation like and the other problem should have the current patch yeah yeah the and so the other thing yeah is that the same mental space that nintendo selects operated in Mm -hmm. um is kind of shifted to what like playstation now or whatever plus that that kind of a thing where it's like oh but this old game now you can get that whole game for free or Uh in a situation where i could see that instead of them ever doing nintendo select on the switch on nintendo swap or you know the next thing 
with your Nintendo Switch online account, there's they do tier like the or collection, an additional thing. tier, like what PlayStation, where it's like yeah. here's PlayStation Plus exactly. collection, here's the essential the, that's ones. Right. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right, right. You get Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey, just like as part of your subscription, mm-hmm. blah, blah blah, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, which then again, you know, like for physical lectures, kind of sucks because you can't do that, but. I, I yeah, do. but they're killing. Are they're trying to kill yeah. the physical collection at every turn? All of the companies, because physical media is having less and less direct, uh, you know, like use. Yeah, because <laughs> it's no longer the thing of like, ah, oh, as long as I had this game, I always had this game. The game that you have is no longer the game. It's yeah. just a key to the game, except for on mm-hmm. Switch. That's the only place right. where that that's true. And even on Switch, I feel like if they act, if they wanted to, they could make the software so that you need to. I mean, they do it, mm, yeah, to a certain extent. So, like, if they really wanted to do it, they with physical games where it's like, oh, you don't own this. This isn't yours, so you mm-hmm. can't turn this on or whatever. They could, yeah. um, but yeah, indeed. Um, Duminal Crossing said wanted to ask this last week but by the time i thought of the question you're already recording lol (laughs) from the perspective of two casual metroid fans who are new to the series what would be your ideal scenario for the long rumored metroid prime anniversary release release would you prefer all three titles or is that overwhelming and you just rather focus on one would you rather have the games remastered or leave them mostly unchanged etc I think the like my ideal scenario uh, would probably not. Uh, well, I don't know. I think that what they should do is remake them, the first mm-hmm. three, um, to be more in line with however the the fourth game is going to be. Um, mm-hmm. And like I would prefer for the like for it to be released with enough time that a normal person could play through it and then play the fourth game. Mm-hmm. Um, rather than doing them all at once or in the same year or whatever, you know, like that sort of situation. Um, that, that's what I would want. I would want it to be like remade with modern sensibilities in mind, uh, Mm -hmm. control wise. Um, and I don't really care if it's much prettier or whatever, like the widescreen would be cool. Um, but outside of that, like, I don't really care about that. Like they can make it as close to the original in that regard. And they don't really have to change that much, but like, as long as the controls are good and they make sense with how games are made now, um, and they're like accessible and the UI is good. And it's not like some annoying convoluted situation, like the all stars pack or whatever, you know, like that's how I would want that to be done. Um, Mm -hmm. so yeah, that, that's what is. Do you have any I other think, thoughts? I mean, I thought about this a lot just at various points in time. And I do feel like, especially since they seem to be using Primes 1, 2, and 3, whatever, or just 1, or whatever it is, mm. as like marketing for Prime 4. Right. That implies a semi, like within probably 12 months or plus or minus mm-hmm. kind of window of release. So based on that i would prefer them to do um just metroid prime remake um because yeah i definitely agree with like it would be great to just have modern sensibilities and i mean even it looked better you know like all that stuff is great right um i honestly you know i think because i also want metroid prime 4 to do as well as possible i would be a little wary of franchise burnout um yeah even though these are like some of the best games you know ever built according to people who've played more than the one and a half hours i've played of metroid prime one (laughs) Um, really the only reason why i would want all three is just so that i know what the heck's going on on four yeah totally. Uh, but if they can you know close that gap with just one i would be fine with just one yeah Um, i think i mean that is a good i don't know how much story kind of stuff plays into that mm -hmm. so you know yeah, I, I'd be interested in that as well. And I, I wouldn't want 4 to spoil 2 and 3 either if there's spoiler stuff to be had there. Then again, I also, to general, is kind of more lore-based than story-based anyway. So I don't know that it's a thing where... I, I don't know. I think there's still twists and, and all that. So I think flow-wise of like feel of playing one remake into metro prime four and then a later follow-up of even like just a remaster of two and three 
which mm. would feel you know how to do all of that because i what i i want to go into four with not feeling like feeling as high on the franchise as possible and i do suspect that if i played one through three before that i'd be like okay here's another one here we go okay um in not the best way so yeah could be wrong about that but that makes sense yeah i think one and then four and then we'll figure out the rest <laughs> Yep. Good question. Um, Mark asked, what's the largest land animal you could defeat in combat? You're in the animal's habitat. You have no weapon, but can make use of the environment around you. Uh, I mean, Mm. if we're talking large and I'm trying to get like whatever the biggest animal is, it had Mm -hmm. to be something that's stupid. Um, so like an ostrich or something. (laughs) Yeah. Like I could see. Are they stupid? I feel like an ostrich is probably an idiot. I feel How ostrich smart is probably is an very ostrich. dumb. They're not particularly intelligent. Good job. Yeah, You're see, right. I'm way smarter <laughs> than an ostrich, so I could probably I could probably take on an ostrich. It might be a close fight, but mm-hmm. I, 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 you know, I feel fine in my intelligence in that regard. Um, so I'm gonna say mm-hmm. ostrich. But here's the question is so it did say yes justin it said without tools but you can use the environment around you the problem is like even if an animal is not intelligent but it's highly like intuitive just Mm -hmm. physically then that's you know a thing to contend with where like you could outsmart it but like if it's just gonna like if it's used to the concept of fighting or something that could be tricky but i don't know who they have nasty what what if i can make them do something you know like how how they like stick their heads in the ground like that type Uh of crap if i make him stick his head in the ground he's it's over him it's It's over here's curtains here's my thought and i i feel bad about this answer but it's it's what i what this is about to be cursed (laughs) um it's more cursed because it's i feel like like more fisticuffs would feel better than what i'm about to say um a really really large tortoise <laughs> ah, yeah, i true, feel true, like true, true, true. True. <laughs> i feel like just some situation where he ends up you can just get him flipped upside down parker is about to say the least wholesome thing he's ever said <laughs> <laughs> just to sit a person no um yeah i feel like you know i i don't trust myself with like physics or whatever but that feels that feels accurate but really sad because it's like i didn't just protect myself from anything uh-huh. i didn't like it's not like a bear where it's like oh you know like i was gonna die but now i'm okay right this right, is right. just like yeah yeah i mean probably then the tortoise would it would definitely would die, like there's, but there's, it would be sad there's two paths that you you would have to go it either has to be something that's very dumb and it's like an easy expo- exploit or it's something that is like there, there's a physical limitation there and i think that, uh-huh. that that's what the tortoise is like you're slow yeah yeah exactly. you know, like i'll flip you over like what are you gonna do man <laughs> for what uh, it's worth for the record, I would never do this in any stretch oh, of anything. Puppy, that's I would crazy. just ride the tortoise. <laughs> Not really. I don't know what I would do. Um, they're coming for revenge. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I think a tortoise. Yeah, is I don't a good know. That's, that's. I think that's. Answer. If we're being accurate, then that's. Yeah, that's probably wise. Yeah, that's where yep, we're at. Yep, yep, yep. So here it is. Whew. There it Man. is. All right, Mega Man asked, "Pokemon Snap coming to Switch Online Game of the Year?" I think so. No, absolutely I mean, not. Go for it. I, game of the year is subjective, so yeah, have a good time. You know. No. <laughs> and last not. question, Alec asked, which Pokemon town would you most like to live in? For the record, when I first read this, I thought it said, which Pokemon would you most like to live in? And I was thinking, Hold like, on. Uh, before we do that, I also want to scroll up because uh-huh. Mega Man asked the question, or who i think it was Mega Man that asked this question uh-huh. but he said something along the lines of like i thought you only had allowed to have one uh, uh pokemon or power rangers or whatever like why was oh, my yeah, mom yeah. okay with that <laughs> um my it's, that's not it's, free, it's not the same thing like the reason why power rangers wasn't okay is that like the 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 whole like appeal and like the episode is like all right we gotta fight this bad guy but sonic mm-hmm. There's a lot of media where Sonic doesn't fight anybody, you know, mm-hmm. like, and that's why she was okay with Sonic. Or it was like, oh, he's not violent. He's just a freaking chill, 
you know like he's chill head uh -huh. chalk he's free like all, all this stuff about the talking animals and whatnot that she didn't think about that until like way later <laughs> we're just like wait maybe maybe talking animals are cringe um <laughs> but i was already too old for her to be able to have any impact in that in that regard uh but when mm -hmm. i was a kid like that's for, like come on can't I, I thought I already responded to the talking animal thing before too, like because uh -huh. I think p when I brought up Blue's Clues, they were like the reason why my mom didn't like Blue's Clues is probably because Blue, which Blue can't even talk, like Blue just says bar 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 and that You're type so of crap. Right. Um, mm, but it was just because she was annoyed by Blue's Clues. <laughs> um, that, that's honestly that's one of those things that we just don't acknowledge as the kids like man my parents really just don't like this show for and it's like no it's straight up they just thought it was annoying and i totally yeah. get that now like watching some kids shows i always now, do like, because I... my mom would just straight up say this is annoying i tell like she would just tell me it was annoying which is fair yep. fair enough mm -hmm. um it is <laughs> but it wasn't i think to i said me this then. before but like i had a friend yeah totally i had a friend that wasn't allowed to watch rugrats just because like the the line drawing kind of like how it's kind of warbly the whole time gave her mom a headache and she was like nah i, I can't <laughs> like i just can't watch that it's it sucks <laughs> and like had no problem with the content or anything but just like yeah i don't want to look at i remember there was like a, there was a brief stint i don't know how long it lasted but we uh me and my sister weren't allowed to watch raw grass because she said my mom said that we would like would like adopt like how they talked mm. and she wasn't cool uh -huh. with that um but that didn't last that long <laughs> that yeah we couldn't watch right, right. um but yeah that was the answer to that yes uh-huh so last question from alec which pokemon town would you most like to live in hashtag relocating um i mean it's got to be one of the freaking like one of like pallet town or like like one of those mm -hmm. just because like whatever town has the coolest starter pokemon <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense yeah because then it, even if you don't get the starter pokemon your kid does at some point you know exactly. but then again you know sure you can start with those pokemon but you could also just catch a pokemon in the wild if you want yeah, to you but who's to say i'm going to be able to find the pokemon that i want you know that's true and starter pokemon are generally pretty good honestly yeah justin said there's only one answer lavender town i was like honestly lavender town and then just decorate for halloween well i don't want to freaking live in lavender town it's sad everybody's care, sad it thing. just seems like a silly time <laughs> town is full of death uh -huh. <laughs> i don't want that hmm yeah i'm i'm gonna go um uh man viridian city right what why Viridian City? No, but it's just I don't know. It's just north of Pallet Town. I feel like I could pop true, down. True, true. You know what? Like, yeah, hey, I guys, agree. I would go, go get yeah, this, but Vir like Viridian City because you get to live in the city, and I'd rather live in the city than live in Pallet Town because Pallet Town seems like it's like the boonies. Mm -hmm. um, also, I like how this city. <laughs> I mean, it's it's called Viridian City. Um, it's literally like two houses. That's true, but that's but, just in the game. Like, look at the anime. It is. It's it's a yeah, whole city. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Viridian City. It up. I yeah, agree. Looks nice. I agree. Cool. Good or stuff. And the, with that, yeah. Use your that's imagination, cool. Parker. That's a fact. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's there's the, the the show. We did it, everybody. Yeah. Like, comment, subscribe, <laughs> rate the podcast, so on and so forth. Uh, mm -hmm. here's the end screen. Bye, everybody. <laughs> you gonna say bye? So long. Okay. We did it. See you next week. Bye.